the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday after Pentecost. I'm outside in our memorial garden in a place where you can hear the wind and the trees and a few birds being out in God's good creation. Let's worship God together. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made for us yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen and amen. Will you join with me in the Confession Liturgy this morning? It will be interspersed by verses of a hymn. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Let us pray together. Let us bring ourselves before Jesus with all of our weariness, all of our worn outness, and all our sadness. Let's pray. Gracious God, we bring ourselves to you because we are too weary to manage any longer on our own. We are too worn out to keep fighting the good fight. We are too sad to be joyful. Gentle God, we confess that we have failed. 
We have sinned even when we knew better. We stayed motionless and silent when we should have acted and spoken up. We have not listened to Christ's words or lived our lives accordingly. God of life, forgive us. In the places that we are parched, send streams of living water to quench our soul's thirst. In the places of death, give us new life. In the places where our spirits are broken, send healing and hope. God of light and life, we thank you that you have forgiven us, that you heal us, and that you light our lives. Give us strength to walk in your ways and live in your light of life all our days. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. First reading from Psalms. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are fallen and raises up all who are bowed down. Word of God, Word of Life. A reading from Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want to do is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my non-members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death. Thanks be to God, Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to the infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It is good to be together. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts and our minds be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Sometimes it's really a good idea to take a large chunk of scripture and to gnaw on it for a while immersing ourselves in the story and spending time in it, learning what it has to teach us. This is a really good and faithful way to study and read scripture. But there is another way as well that I have to remember to pay attention to. It's what happened to me with two of the readings that we have for today. Two phrases, one from the Psalms and one from the Gospels, that stick in my heart and reverberate around inside of my head. They are this. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary. And the psalmist says, the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. So let's spend some time today with just these two little nuggets, these small bites of scripture that we can easily memorize and hold in our hearts. We need to remember that Jesus knows what human life is like. Jesus never lived through a pandemic in his lifetime, but he knows what widespread suffering and pain are. Jesus knew ethnic segregation. He knew gender inequality. He knew about the division between classes of people. That was a part of his reality too. And he saw it every time he walked through the villages as he traveled around the region crowds of people would flock to him. People who were sick and suffering and isolated and hurting. People who were longing for healing. They had no options. And they were willing to even go out and see this traveling preacher to see what he could do for them. Jesus was always surrounded by needy people. And to them and to us, he issues this invitation. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I love that Jesus is making this gentle offer to us. Come to me. Jesus welcomes us to be with him. We don't have to be alone. All you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, come and join me. 
Jesus says, let me take those heavy burdens from you for a while and I will give you rest. You don't have to bear the weight of the world alone. It's not even really yours to bear. There was a time that I took these words quite literally. I felt like I was carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders. I was the mother of two young children, a wife. I was the sole pastor of a busy church. We lived thousands of miles from any family or support network, and I was the only one who had a paycheck because Christian had taken time to be a stay-at-home dad. There was this immense pressure and I felt it every day. I felt this burden of responsibility and duty and it was weighing down my body and my heart and my soul. So one day I took Jesus at his word. Come to me all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. I carted this whole pile of rocks with me into the sanctuary of that church and I dumped the rocks right there on the floor in front of Jesus. And I sat down on the floor right between the first pews with a pile of rocks between me and the cross. And I took up one rock and I named onto it the worries that I held onto and I placed it before Jesus. And each rock was another worry or a burden or a prayer request or an issue that I had to deal with. Rock after rock, I gave them all to Jesus until I had nothing left in front of me, and Jesus had it all. And after I cried for a little while, I felt a little bit better, and I got up and I left the rocks there. After all, Jesus did say, I will give you rest. I felt lighter, less burdened, less responsible for the things that Jesus could take of far better than I could have. It wasn't until the next day when the custodian came into my office that I remembered, he said, Hey, Pastor Tiffany, what am I supposed to do with all those rocks that are in the middle of the sanctuary? What burdens are we carrying? What things can we give to Jesus? Because we believe that Jesus has a far better ability to deal with those things than we do. My cousin Mandy took the rock idea to a different place. It was actually in a recent newspaper article in her town. When COVID restrictions kept her and her son at home, she was struggling to find some joy and some purpose and a way to stay sane. She's an artist stuck at home with an eight-year-old who was still young enough to find wonder in God's good creation. So every day they went out on a walk and as they went, Gabe would pick up stones. She had to take a bucket to gather everything that he was trying to carry home. And they sat at the kitchen table and to keep him occupied, my cousin suggested that he start painting the rocks. And they did. On their daily walks now, they put the painted rocks out where people can find them and gather new unpainted rocks that are still waiting for paint. And these rocks that they've made are brightly colored and they have little whimsical pictures on them that make you smile. These rocks aren't burdens. They're little surprises of joy found at the edge of a garden or in a rock wall or at the base of a tree. Jesus says, take my yoke and learn from me. Now this gets a little more complicated. Yokes are symbols of work. They're heavy, they're solid, they're unforgiving. Reminds me of young Almanza Wilder who would grow up to marry Laura Ingalls. In her book, Farmer Boy, Laura Ingalls Wilder recounts the story of Almanza's childhood and in several chapters talks about his ninth birthday. He received from his parents a yoke for his two young oxen who were named Star and Bright. He had already learned how to care for the animals. He was entrusted with that duty. They were his after all. And now the animals and the young owner were old enough to learn how to work together. With his father's help, Amonzo goes out into the barn and yokes the animals together. And the first one, Bright, keeps trying to twist his head to try to see what this thing is sitting on his shoulders. 
and Star comes along and joins in the fun, and they are now yoked together. And Almanzo, whom they love and follow, stands in front of them and encourages them. It takes them several weeks working together to learn to control their giddy up and their whoa. And then they move to the right when he says gi, and they move to the left when he says ha. It took great patience for Almanzo because the animals were learning to listen, to obey, and they had to learn how to work together. If one was having a bad day, it didn't work, but they learned. The animals couldn't see the big picture. They didn't know the goal. They just knew the commands and they trusted that their owner would get them to where they needed to be. When Almanzo is first given the yoke, his father tells him that he has to prepare it by brushing the inside of it smooth with broken glass because that's gonna make the wood smooth enough to protect their necks. Almanzo had to train them to understand the commands and he had to teach them how to learn to work together. He had to care for the calves by not overusing the yoke on them. And as his father said, to always gently teach them. We're like those young oxen. We have a lot to learn from Jesus. His yoke is still a yoke, but the burden that we're shouldering, it's a burden shared. And a burden shared is much easier to carry. In our baptismal promises, we are yoked to Christ. We have chosen our lot and the one with whom we want to work. This work that we have is Christ's work. We're not doing this work alone. We are following Christ's lead and the burden that we're carrying is shared and we always have help right next to us. Here's the other verse that has stuck in my head this week. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The burdens that we're bearing, the work that we are doing, they don't compare to the depth of God's grace. The worries that we're holding on to, they are not as wide as God's mercy. And the fears and the anxiety are not as high as God's love for us. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord is slow to anger. The Lord is abounding in steadfast love. This is my prayer for me and for all of us. May it be so. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Will you join me in prayer? Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Lord of life, hear our prayer. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, the water, and the land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation. Direct us towards sustainable living. Lord of life, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations, especially the United States and Canada, celebrating their nationhood. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Lord of life, hear our prayer. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, feeling despair, sick or oppressed. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give in your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Lord of life, hear our prayer. We pray for this congregation. Bless pastors, deacons, and uh, congregational leaders. Energize children's ministry, volunteers, church administrators, and those who maintain our building. Shine in this place that we might notice the ways you love transforms in our life. Lord of life, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in a new life. Lord of life, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace this day and every day. Amen.